Welcome, everyone. We're starting. <laughs> so thank you for, for joining this Global Perspectives Transition Around the World. Uh, so we have a number of countries joining us, and we'll show you that in a moment. Um, maybe you can put it on the gallery view. Sure. I think this is what they see now. Yeah, it keeps, 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 okay. <laughs> um, so we're, we're learning the technology as we go here. We're very comfortable, all of us that are on this call, with the Zoom platform. <laughs> what we aren't as comfortable with is how it interfaces with the house PA. And so what we need to do very mindfully as we go, there'll be these lag times where we have to unmute our computer, um, mute or, um, and open the house mic to hear them. <laughs> so, so I think we have a worked out, bear with us, and it'll be a wonderful, entertaining presentation. So I wanted to um, introduce the folks, give them a good wave. Um, this is a session where um, Nils and I have met the, the folks that are, are on this um, recently in Italy at the Transition Hubs Gathering. And many of them I've met even prior than that, and just have very, very warm feelings for. So thank you all for joining us. <laughs> for, for some of you, it's afternoon. For some of you, it's evening. And Shinro from Japan, I have no idea what time it is, but it might be the middle of the night. So um, people are joining us from a number of different time zones. We've got the world wrapped with these folks. And um, so what we'll do is we're going to try to keep it fairly simple. We're going to do a few rounds. They'll be quite conversational. I'll be first introducing people. Um, I will then ask them to talk about a success, something that they'd love you to hear, a highlight from their work. And then we'll do another round of that as well, because that'll get them going and they'll think of things as they hear from each other. We'll do another round of that. And then we'll also, of course, want to know what challenges they faced and how they've overcome them. So we'll do another round of challenges. And we'll do some Q&A at the end. And we'll actually be taking a cell phone around so that they can see you and hear you. <laughs> We worked this out. We hope it all works. And you'll be talking into the cell phone to them. And then again, we've got this lag time, muting, unmuting, house me. So, so all of that. Well, he, he's just on phone. Okay. So I was going to introduce people. Let yeah. me just do a quick. Okay, so um, before Caroline starts to introduce our global transitioners, just the only thing I really wanted to say is that. Um, this is to partially to give us a sense of the global aspect of this transition going to italy and meeting transitioners from 25 countries is really mind-blowing to just show us how how much solidarity there is around the world in this movement and then also since we're also uh, mindful of our carbon footprint it's great to learn the art of virtual hosting and we can you know use technologies like this to uh, organize with each other across the country and i was doing with mira over there like we, we we can communicate with each other in in new ways now so um, to leverage this tool and so i'm really glad to see you guys and thanks for being here all right so without further ado i'm going to introduce you in alphabetical order so we have tanya and i'm afraid i'm not going to try to pronounce your last name but when when, when you talk, please do let us know. Um, Tanya's from Denmark. She's a member of the Transition National Hub there. She's a garden ambassador of practical organic gardening and a representative of Transition Denmark's working group, which translated means the common good. Um, Tanya's a 
live wire firecracker catalyzer amazing person and you'll hear from her soon and then we have Juan Del Rio he's from Spain lives in Barcelona and he says of himself and I agree he's an apprentice of life and certainly an agent of change he's a biologist activist facilitator educator and researcher and he's a coordinator of transition Spain and a member of our newest working group and effort, which is municipalities in transition. So Juan, we hope to hear a little more about that from yeah. you too. And he's a writer and has written a number of articles and um, translated a number of publications for transition as well. And then we have Isabella. And um, Isabella is from Brazil. And... Yeah. <laughs> And Isabella is one of the biggest hearted people I've ever met. And you'll experience that. She just, you just will experience through the virtual online platform. And she's an architect, an urbanist, and she attended Gaia education that some of you may know about. And she works on development of sustainability and education projects and the regeneration of social systems. She's also a trustee of the Transition Network Board, and she's what there's a, a role on that board now, and it's called Keeper of the Global Perspective. So Issa is holding the global perspective for, for us. And then we have Nina, and um, I want you all to please say your last names. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just not very good with languages. And most of you are fluent in a number of them. And so grateful that you're here and speaking English with us. Thank you. Um, so Ninad is a co-founder and current coordinator of a transition hub in Croatia. He's a cultural creative permaculture designer and has a particular interest in facilitating virtual groups and I know he's going to talk a little bit about that. Um, he's an enabler of high trust networks so uh, um, those focused on systemic change and he's just doing a lot of stuff we're going to hear more more about that and then we have some surprise guests because Nina put the call out and we have Arturo and Shunro so we I don't have their introductions and we'll hear from them a little later. What we'll start though is the, the, the people that I just mentioned have prepared some remarks um, and then we'll open it up to Shunro and Arturo if they have other things to add. Um, so we'll do a round and if it's okay with all of you, I think I'll keep it in the same order as I did the introductions and that might just keep it simpler. Yeah, Jean -Paul. Oh, and John Paul joined. Oh, so we have more surprise guests. Great, thank you. Um, so that's what we'll do. So now I'm going to mute and well, we'll, we'll get to, to you. We'll give you a thumbs up, Tanya, when we're ready. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Uh, are you okay? I'll wait, technical point. So everything is okay now, are you hear me? Okay. Um, first of all, my name is Tanya Ertibia, which means Mount, P Mountain uh, or Mountain of Peace. So maybe that will make it easier for you in, to, in the future, uh, Caroline. So P Mountain, that is. So, um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm a four-year member of the, the Danish uh, hub and uh, was hosting um, when there was um, a, a conference, a hub conference in Copenhagen uh, three years ago when I met Caroline first time and I'm happy to meet Nils this uh, year in, um, in San Toso. Um, the Danish hub is, um, is quite small. Um, that might be one of the, uh, the challenges, but um, uh, what we do is we work a lot with other uh, different kinds of um, organizations that has the same sort of goal 
Um, one of the things about transition is that it's, it's very broad. It's like an umbrella looking on all the topics regarding sustainability and transition. And that it makes it really easy because then we have, um, a, it's easy for us to approach other organizations. So we work a lot with the Permaculture Denmark, with the Eco Village uh, movement, um, and uh, like uh, organic gardening and, and uh, organic farming and, you know, food corps, lots of different kinds of, um, and, and lots of them are uh, connected in this thing called the common good. Um, which is um, having uh, convergences or conferences every second year. Um, and that is a really, really good thing that reaching out and working with others is um, bringing in lots of more people knowing about transition in general with the transition town movement and, and streets and, and, you know, all the initiatives that has uh, sprung out from there, from um, the urban gardening and from uh, repair cafes and lots of other stuff. Um, so it's, it's a good way of uh, connecting and spreading the word and also get something done. Because when you're not a big hub or a big movement, because every little initiative is very, normally very busy for themselves, which they of course should be, but it might sometimes be difficult for us to get people into the hub and work with us. So it's, it's better to work with the other organizations hub on bigger issues and also apply for money for it. Um, one of the biggest successes that I've been involved in was that we in Copenhagen um, thought we needed somewhere that we could meet and, and, and be a sort of a hub for the hub. Um, so we, um, we had the opportunity to, to use some facilities that in the front shop there was, um, we had to have a flower shop. And since that is one of the most polluting and difficult and bad um, industries at all, we decided that we had to do that one sustainable. Um, so we did. So we actually ran a sustainable flower shop for one and a half years until we had to leave the premises again. And um, right now we're looking for another place um, to be. Um, but we actually found out that surprisingly, when we thought we needed the room in order to have places, a place for people to come and do transition and do all the, the workshops and speaks and everything, what connected people was the practical hands-on things regarding the, um, the flower shop. So that was what attracted people most. And that was a really, it has been a really good success. So um, I think um, I'll let the next ones come here. So can you hear me? That's good, thank you. So uh, it's a real pleasure to stay here with all of you. I feel like a, a worldwide family. So thank you so much, Caroline, Niels, and everyone there in the US for inviting me and, and the others. Um, well, I guess, well, just to tell you that I'm calling you uh, right now from Mallorca. I'm starting my, my holidays. So that today I was in the beach, it was wonderful. and. I continue the afternoon right now here is like half past five almost and um, yeah and it's it's like a little break and a, a pleasure to share some little experiences when Caroline uh, asked us to, to talk about some successes and, and some uh, challenges well I was starting to think and um, it's not that we have uh, one success that you Thing. This is like a huge change and, and, and with this we end this systemic crisis we're facing it, not at all. Uh, but um, so the, the, the successes, they are relative. Um, and the urgency is huge. The moment we are living, and this is something I really want to say and, and to be clear with all of you, it's not that we don't know, but sometimes we need to, tell, to say it again. Um, we are in a very urgent moment all over the world, here in Spain, of course, too, as, as they're in the US. And um, we need success at different levels, local, regional, national, and so on. Uh, also, to, to, to maintain the momentum and to take us, you know, to, 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 to have energy to continue and to, and to evolve and, and to go forward. Um, but successes and challenges, they are completely interlinked. Okay, so in a way, maybe I'm going to be talking of both. But uh, um, the movement 
in itself, the transition movement in itself is starting in 2008, more or less, in Spain. First local initiatives started at that moment. Uh, more or less with the beginning of the economical crisis that still is quite strong here in Spain with a lot of unemployment and, and so on. Indeed, one of the, the interesting things of this workshop and of the movement is how it has been, um, in these only like 10 or 11 years, has been adapted to different contexts and, and realities. At the same time, it's a challenge because um, if you realize, mainly we are talking about middle class, uh, uh, well-educated people. So how we can involve uh, more diversity and include more diversity is a, is a very big challenge. So it started more or less in 2008. Uh, 2011, and I'm doing this like quick context review because like this, I think you can understand a little bit better. 2011, in May, we started here with the Indignados movement, what, was, what it was uh, before the um, Occupy movement in the Anglo-Saxon world. So it was something very strong and that gave a very big push to the movement here. A lot of local initiatives emerged. And um, 2012, we did our first uh, national gathering and then it was when we started with our hub, so, which it has been, um, uh, yeah, a group of people, a diverse group of people from different places that we have been working, catalyzing the movement and connecting as uh, Tanya was explaining with many all the different organizations, because one of the big success, I think, of the movement in itself is that um, it, it um, on the one hand, can be a very um, useful umbrella to include many different projects, and on, and on the other hand also to, to be like um, a glue that can connect uh, with this um, wider and systemic view many other things that they were happening already before, because this is not that we are reinventing the wheel. And um, since, since then, since 2012, uh, mm, quite a lot of local initiatives, not all of them with, with the name of transition, but many of them has been appearing. Right now we are talking about between 60 and 70 local transition initiatives, many others with other names. Um, and recently, well, recently, in 2015, more or less, we, we did um, a, a, a big uh, meeting with people from many different local uh, social initiatives. And um, what we were talking about it was which are the main challenges and opportunities we are facing. Among them, and all these challenges, they are fractal. They, are, they, look in the, they happen mainly in the individual, in the local group, and also in the... Um, in the national and regional and in the hub, we realized how difficult it was to have more impact. Uh, to, to, we really wanted to, to have bigger impact, not just a little garden uh, uh, and, and so on. And connected to that, it was the difficulty of working together with um, municipalities. And um, how can we build bridges among municipalities and local initiatives and work together because they are trying to do things many times but they don't know neither how to connect with with what is happening more in the community level and from that discussion in 2016 we started in spain a project called municipios en transición um, and we started to work we made an open call uh more than 12 i think it were like uh, around 15 uh, municipalities they want to take part on a pilot project that happened, it started in 2016. And, uh, and it has, well, it's a starting, but uh, and it's very experimental. And main, mainly what it, what it want is at the end to be able to uh, build together transition plans at the municipal level, including community and uh, municipality. And this is, has been the seed with the, um, uh, with the impulse of many people uh, of, the tra of the wider transition movement, among them Transition US with Caroline, uh, and people from Italy, from the UK, and so on, for the uh, emergent and very new Municipalities in Transition project that is right now starting. And I'm going to just say a few sentences about that, and I will pass to the next one, if not, it's going to be too long. And um, basically, this project that started this, this year, and it, it's a real uh, very big success because we have been able 
uh, to build it with in a collaborative way online like we are doing right now here which is uh, only a few years ago it wasn't possible and right now we are doing it so the 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 thing that we are doing this little workshop online is a huge success in itself and this is a big transition example and so we were able to co-create uh, this project and or the seed of this project and apply for funding and we got that funding uh, among, I don't remember, but almost like 300 applications, we were able to succeed and only nine succeeded. So that was a, <laughs> a very important success. success. And, um, and right now we're starting with it. And this project, what it's trying to do is first to collect, to map um, examples, experiences uh, all over the world that they are mm, doing a transition at the municipal level, connecting with the communities. And later, we are going to do, uh, with all this research, we are going to apply these um, learnings to three different pilots in three different countries in the world. And this is happening already right now. So we expect this to be um, a new step on the evolution of the movement, also because this can open new windows and uh, new learnings for all of us. So this is something that's happening right now. and. Um, Later, if you have some specific questions, I can uh, just explain you a little bit more. And uh, thank you for the time, my dear friends. And I pass to the next. That I, if I remember well, it was Isa. So hi everyone. I I will share I will share my screen just a moment, just for you to see uh, image. I hope you can see it. So this is the south of the planet sending a lot of love and I'm really happy I am here with you all. I would like to speak a little bit about uh, Brazil. I am, uh, this is our hub. Uh, we are running transition since 2009 and um, I think it's amazing to see uh, uh, how many people, people from different areas are working with transition in their areas. So you have Monica that works with community. We have Zaira that is inside an eco village uh, doing transition. You have Mayis that is all over the world doing transition and guide education. You have Gabriela in Portugal working with food and consciousness. Uh, because food is really a very, very important issue. You have Claudia that is living in Australia and came to Brazil to give many, many trainings. And Frank and Marcelo that work with architecture, so they, they, brought, they brought transition to, the, to this um, area. Uh, Lara is working with municipalities strongly, especially in Sao Paulo. You have Thaisa that is in, inside the academy and uh, doing many, many things. So it's amazing to see. Um, this for me, it's a big success. I have stopped the, the sharing, okay? So this for me, it's a, a, a success to see a, a big hub, many groups in Brazil, doing so much transition. We, um, we are rescuing, rescuing after 20 years of dictatorship in Brazil, the joy of getting together and doing stuff together. Because when I, when I was young, it was like my father used to say to me, it's dangerous, don't get together with people, you are going to be arrested. <laughs> uh, because I think he already knew that I was like a person that really loves to, to get together <laughs> and do stuff. So uh, I, I think the movement came to Brazil and inspire everybody that you can get together, you can do things together. And um, for me, this is one of the biggest success. And also that uh, we have grown really uh, big in inspiring people here. So I am not the crazy one anymore the, because Transition is making sense to a lot of people. We have uh, many, many groups, not all of them call themselves transition, but this is not really important. The important thing is that 
the transition is doing sense for everybody. So everybody says, we have to get together, we have to, to plan, to dream together and to do stuff together. So I think this is one of the major success. I have a list that I am already forgetting what I have to say, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But uh, uh, for me, this is the stronger one, to, to rescue this spirit of community, uh, because we, we have this uh, terrible uh, way of uh, uh, um, waiting for the government, the municipality, to do everything for us. So transition brings this us to, to us. We can do it. And um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sh should I go on or maybe uh, there will be another round, okay? Okay, so I will pass to Nenat. Yay! Okay, <clears throat> hello everybody. Um, nice to see you all. Um, it's a little bit uh, strange uh, to uh, beam yourself across the world like this. And um, uh, I'm uh, actually thinking quite a lot about United States. It's a big country. And if the transition takes off in uh, United States, I think uh, we have a chance. So uh, I am uh, inviting you to do your best over there with transition. So I would like to share um, uh, one uh, very local example from Croatia, from Zagreb, uh, the city where I uh, live and work, and also one international example. And I will share screen as well as Isabella did. So uh, in uh, March uh, 2013, um, we were screening Position two zero here in Zagreb, in a community center. Uh, we had quite a lot of uh, people in the room, around 150 or so. And uh, what was interesting that uh, in the room there was a, a group of young mothers who were actually looking what they could. Uh, oh, sorry. Technical problem, sorry. Ah. So uh, just a little quick, quick uh, thing since he's doing that. Uh, a hack that we use sometimes in Zoom communications is when uh, people can't hear us when we're on mute. Uh, if we clap, they don't hear us. But if we do something like this, they like see that we're clapping. So I just wanted to uh, presence that while Nina's working on it. Before you do that, and um, so after after Nina is through, um, I'm going to invite you all, same order, to add what you might have thought of that you didn't add. <laughs> or to give us another example or something. We'll go the same order again. So after Ninad, we'll go back to Tanya, then Juan and Isabella and Ninad again. All right? So we're going to mute ourselves and we'll be back to you, Nina. Yeah, we'll, we'll mic you back up. Nina is still looking a little goofy, but we'll, we'll have you on audio. And uh, to the audience here, start thinking if you have any questions for these folks in the, the final round. Nina, you can go. They are, they can't, you can't hear them, but I think they, they were saying that you can go. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Very well. Sorry for this uh, technical uh, trouble. I will, uh, I will try to move on. 
So my example from uh, uh, Zagreb, Croatia, is about successful transition initiative that was uh, started by a group of young mothers. And uh, uh, they are now a very active community center that uh, offers uh, several times more uh, programs daily uh, in their neighborhood than the nearest community center. And they do that all as volunteers without paid staff and community center, they have paid staff. And uh, what is also interesting, they do it all without meetings. They intentionally don't do meetings, they just do stuff. So that's a nice, interesting, agile way to do things. So I'll try to show you a couple of uh, photos uh, if my computer will uh, listen. So very, very uh, quickly. So this is uh, that community center in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, one of their uh, uh, green market days twice a week. They have uh, uh, lots of programs that uh, promote uh, local, local food and they also have lots of programs for children. And uh, uh, they tend to decorate their environment quite, uh, uh, in quite innovative and interesting way they say for themselves, we like to color things. So uh, that's, that's uh, one of their windows. So that's, uh, that's it for me for now, uh, just an example of a successful transition initiatives that was inspired by uh, a screening in Transition 2.0 movie in 2013, sorry. So, uh, uh, speaking of um, another, uh, maybe international uh, success, uh, what I noticed on your uh, very nice website is this picture. Uh, this is taken in spring, in March uh, this year in Amalura, Spain, and this shows this room is actually uh, General Assembly of Ecolis Network, network that uh, is set up in Europe uh, to gather permaculture, transition, and eco-village uh, movement organizations. And as you can see, this is a very beautiful room. And um, not only people that you see on this picture are attending uh, uh, the gathering. Uh, there is a screen over there and 10 more people are beamed into the room to take part into this, in this uh, gathering that took three days. And that was fully interactive uh, participation. So this is an example how we can collaborate internationally and also uh, on uh, levels of scale beyond local transition initiatives, which is something as already Niels mentioned uh, very important for United States. And not only that, we can also build relationships this way for us as transitioners, uh, relationships building collaborations uh, across different uh, geographies and organizations are important and very often we need to do it uh, remotely. And uh, if uh, maybe I think uh, Jay Tont and uh, Tina Clark are somewhere here with you. Uh, they could tell you how that, uh, uh, what, what is their experience uh, in developing collaboration and re relationships remotely between uh, me and them, for example. Uh, I uh, uh, was, I am collaborating with, uh, with Jade for some time now and recently Tina and I got in touch planning some collaboration in the future. So it can be done even without face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and gatherings. So that's it for me. Um, yeah, me again. Um, I've been thinking quite a lot about what would be interesting for 
United States, uh, what we're doing here. And um, it might be a prejudiced thing for me to say this, but since um, like I see America a lot more religiously connected than especially the Danes, we are not that much church goers and stuff. Um, but actually, a part of the Danish church has, has uh, decided to go green and take responsibilities uh, towards the creative um, work of God, um, as they see it. Um, so they have, uh, they have actually made a whole program uh, for the green church. Um, and they, um, they have uh, um, participated in, uh, in some of the things that we have done in the common good. And through that, um, they learned about uh, the transition network and they learned about the flower shop. And since they were going to make a pamphlet for the green churches on how to make um, uh, f uh, sustainable flowers for the altar and, and everything else for the church, um, they asked if we wanted to participate in, in making that one and also making um, articles and and uh, come up with the solutions and also instructional uh, videos. Um, so that is one of the things that I've done here and working with, uh, with the church. And they, even if we say we don't, we're not a lot of churchgoers here, um, they do an enormous uh, social work in the communities and they own a lot of land. They actually own more than they even know because you know, each church has some land and they know, each church know approximately how much land they have and they sub it out for conventional farmers mostly. But now the green church, they are very keen on figuring out how they, are, they can convert this land into something that is more organic or community um, um, used uh, anyways. So it's a, it's actually very interesting to to work with um, with the church on this. Um, they also have the facilities for having repair cafes and and you know swap markets and lots of other things. Um, they they already have the um, uh, media of uh, communication. They make pamphlets um, and they they post you know um, advertising in the local newspapers and stuff. So I see that as one of the the really um, uh, nice things that has happened because it's um, it's the ideas that can come out. It doesn't have to be, you know, religiously um, connected. So for us, it there has been this discussion. Yeah, but it's a church, and if people are may might not see themselves as Christians, um, how can we um, how can we then work with them and we come up with the with the view that it doesn't really matter because um, lots of people who use the church as a social um, um, services are not religious and they don't actually preach. There's, uh, there's nothing where you, they ever ask that. If you get this, like if you participate in this, you have to become Christian. Like it's not very Christian to do that anyways. So it, it's, um, it has been a, a really nice work uh, to, to do and communicate with them uh, on, on all these uh, topics. And uh, it's something that we are going to do quite a lot more, hopefully, depending, depending on who, um, who can actually, you know, take up the communication and, and bring it out. But they also really like to show the, the movie uh, Demain or Tomorrow, if you know it, or else it's, it's a movie that has been really popular here. Um, and good tool for education as well. So that is um, one more from, from Denmark um, that I thought maybe was something that could be related. And again, sorry for being prejudiced, but I hope it might be uh, um, an inspiration. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I'm gonna go local right now. I, I live in a little town uh, called Cardedeu, which is like 40 minutes from, from Barcelona. And, um, and I moved there intentionally because uh, Barcelona, as, the, as every big city, is probably not the, the best scale to work, which it doesn't mean 
that we don't need to work on the cities. No, we really need to do it. But um, the experiment of Transition Barcelona, that it happened, that uh, it was one of the first initiatives, uh, it worked well in the sense that uh, right now there's local initiatives in few neighborhoods, but at some point it just didn't continue. No? And I went to, to Cardedeu in 2013, and um, uh, a place where already were happening, um, quite a lot of interesting things, um, a consumer and producer food cooperative, a time bank, uh, some uh, permaculture projects, uh, a very interesting school of, of self-sufficiency, self uh, so very interesting projects, but all of them, they were in a way isolated, they weren't working uh, a lot together. So, um, so a little group and uh, with a local transition initiative over there, and the first thing we decided to do, it was um, what in Spain we call merienda, that it could be um, like on the tea time to um, share some food and meet together and, and start to connect with, with everyone. And what it started with uh, just with a moment of uh, sharing some food and starting to talk and to share uh, who we are and, and what, what do we want in, in the town and and how we can work together. Uh, right now, if I look back on time, we have done like 25 meriendas de transición, like transition tea times and meetings. And uh, the first one, I, I share this because it's like a very, and I think, yeah, I think it's like a very easy way. Each of us can start an initiative in, in, in our place if we don't, you don't know what to do it, how to do it, is, um, we were just opening the space with uh, a very brief uh, and relaxed uh, explanation about the global uh, systemic crisis and about what is transition. And uh, later we started to do some games, you know, something funny. If it's not funny, it's not sustainable. You already know this. And, um, and later we, we just started to share some food that everyone brought, local food mainly, and every, everyone enjoyed a lot. So at the end, what we, what we did is, okay, good, we'd like to meet again the next month, the same day. And of course, everyone wanted to do it. Okay, so then who would like to organize this? Ah, okay, but it's not you that is gonna organize it. Yes, but me, I can support you, but you or whoever wants to do it, can, can do it. So, like this, you start like a retrofitting circle. Uh, and in the second meeting, one uh, month after, we said, okay, but maybe for many people it's not enough just to meet once a month in a very relaxed way and to connect and to celebrate and so on. So then from that second meeting, we started like a different space um, that it, with let's say more uh, dedication, but both the spaces are part of the transition local community, okay? Because you need to take into account that there's people that they maybe can, can uh, devote more time than others and, and, and so on. So, um, since then, mm, well, we have uh, done quite a lot of uh, practical projects and we have continued with these meetings, each time with a different um, uh, dedicated to a different issue. So we have talked about energy, we have invited people from many different places, we have um, done a collective um, consumer uh, map of the region, inviting producers and so on. And um, we have also started to work with, with the local government. And I want to show, I want to show you, um, can I do it just uh, sharing the screen here a moment. I'm going to do it like this. Da, 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 compartir pantalla. Yeah. One moment. So this is the website of our local transition initiative. Uh, in one of these um, of these meriendas, we did this this logo to arrive to to the place. You have a train, so it's like if okay, you arrive to the 
to the train, but later, you know, like many different projects that they are, are emerging. And I wanted to show you just quickly few pictures of the last project we are uh, doing that it started with one of these meriendas because uh, normally we start the project from the motivations of the people, no? And it was one incredible edible project that right now in two different squares of the town, and we have some schools also that they are working with, with it. And uh, yes, I want to show you here. I don't know if you can see it. So these are, these are just like few pictures, you know, of, um, we did this handmade and, uh, and you can see how we were preparing the, the space for everyone to grow, we invited, uh, and right now, um, I mean, it's amazing how it's, 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 it's working. This was the first day when we, we started. And, uh, and the community has taken the ownership of the place. So at the beginning, the, um, the municipality, they didn't want we to do this. And right now, they want we to do it in many different places of, of the town. So this is a very big su success in the, local, in, in the locality, you know? So anyway, I just wanted to show you three, pic three pictures. That, and yeah, uh, I will, and you can see here, for some of you, this is here, she's Anna, that she's a hamster from Spain, but she was there. Anyway, so that's from, I'm gonna stop here, and that's just few more successes on the local level, a few more ideas. So I stop here, and I pass to Isabella. Thank you for it. And uh, I will go local too. And we'll go personal all also. Um, one challenge that I live is that I work in transition in three levels, local, national, and international. And this takes a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy, <laughs> but um, uh, sometimes I, I really have, because transition is about having internal space for you to give and to do and to get together and and to think so and i love it uh, is the thing i i want to do to do most in my life i have a a, a great time doing transition for me is the most important fun and good thing that i i do and i do it in a voluntary base so this is really really a challenge right now brazil is living a a suitcase of challenges, as the world, all the world. But we have many, many challenges now and uh, uh, an economic crisis. So um, this now is a, a big challenge for me. And I am really uh, working on uh, earning my living and still doing my job. I want to show you all my transition group. We, and this is another challenge that we have. We are all women <laughs> in a big group talking at the same time. This is another challenge my group has. <laughs> but we are really, really happy that we to transition. Um, but you see, giving balance inside us, our personal life, our professional life, our transition life, our transition family, this is something that I really work on every day, not to burn out and to keep this energy amazingly high. And every time we get together like this, this is like a magic. This is like us creating peace with people from all over the world. So this gives me a lot of energy and nurtures me and, and I feel very, very happy. So it's a good challenge. But we have to work on this. Another thing I want to mention is that uh, culturally in Brazil, uh, social movements are seen as something that you have to do as a volunteer. And we need to change this because uh, uh, this is the good work. So we need to really put money in, in, in working for the planet and for the community. Thank you. And I will pass to Nenat, right? Yeah, there is, there is something with the women and transition. Uh, this uh, 
this group I was uh, showing earlier is also uh, women only and men are guests occasionally. So uh, um, very familiar environment. So I would like to uh, tell a little bit about challenge, which we all share basically at uh, national levels. Uh, when we form a transition hub core group, uh, we normally are not all from the same place. We are normally all over the country. And it's not uh, really convenient to plan our collaboration uh, based on face-to-face -face meetings only. Because that involves uh, travel and not everybody uh, wants or is able to travel. And that involves uh, also uh, resources, uh, money is needed for that, etc. So the way we have um, solved this challenge here, uh, as, a, as a transition hub core group, we of course do meetings. And uh, we uh, simply decided that we would like to uh, make our meetings uh, blended the same way as we are doing this event right now. Part of the people in the room, part of the people on screen. And uh, we uh, decided uh, to support each other in making this comfortable. Uh, so we were experimenting with different equipment setups. One of our members, uh, he's a senior citizen that lives on an island. So um, uh, we took some time to assist uh, him uh, get uh, skills required to connect to our calls uh, regularly. And uh, over some time, after a couple of meetings like that, we became uh, skilled. And this process was going on in parallel, basically uh, with the uh, hubsters worldwide experimenting with uh, Zoom uh, platform and video conferencing. And we also uh, learned through that. We also supported each other to get these uh, skills to collaborate remotely uh, and to use video conferences, conferencing platforms in a way that is uh, comfortable and even enjoyable for all of us. So um, I guess uh, my point is that um, being open to learning is really, really important for transition. And that's how we have faced this challenge of uh, uh, remote uh, core group members all over the country. So that's, that's it from me. Back to Caroline and Niels. Okay, great. Oh, you want to, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for those uh, shares. That was fantastic. Um, so we've got about 30 minutes left in this workshop. So we would like to, we have some surprise guests who are joining us and it's fantastic. Um, we're going to invite some brief remarks from our surprise guests. Uh, first Arturo, then Franz, uh, Jean-Paul and Shunro. If you're on there and you want to share too, we'll call on you. Um, and then hopefully um, these will just be sort of brief remarks and then we'll have time for Q&A with uh, our live participants. So uh, let's see, I'll mute us and pass it on to Arturo. Arturo, are you there? Can you put your camera too? Uh, Arturo was struggling with the low bandwidth, so he may not be able to get through. So, Franz, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I was not really prepared to speak. Can you hear me? Um, I'm having a little problem here with a microphone. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So, yeah. Um, greetings to all from Austria. I'm uh, very late, uh, but I'm very happy that we have this, uh, these meetings and uh, we connect more and more uh, in the transition family. Um, I was asked to, to, uh, to talk about success and uh, 
well, the the one success that uh, that I'm really, really happy is that on my way to Italy, I discovered uh, a town uh, where people did not really have uh, very much connection to transition network, but they did it all right, you know. And so this was a real good opener for me to to arrive in Santoso with uh, the knowledge that we had that we had this enormous capability of local groups to understand why it is so important to share experiences globally. And that's why they chose to be a transition initiative and not something else. That's, that's, that's what I have to say in this moment. Yeah, hello. Everybody, so for me, I just wanted to share with you an important point uh, on developing a local initiative. Uh, I think the most important, one of the solution, one of the best solutions, one we have used in Southeast Paris, so it's called Suci. And uh, in fact, the idea is, if I can share my screen, I will show you. If you see the screen here, um, it's to provide to people uh, as many uh, groups, uh, we call them workshops, as possible. So you see here, it's like uh, people can get food if each week, good uh, organic food. Here there is cosmetic, we know how to do bio-cosmetic, repair bikes, do meditation, uh, group purchasing, garden, communication video web uh, to learn how to do food pictures, uh, clean energy, uh, cooking together, and uh, zero waste, trans internal, uh, inner transition, and walking. So at the beginning, we didn't have all these groups, but what we do is we, we, we started with some groups, and when someone says, okay, uh, let's, um, let's start something, I feel ready to do something, I say, okay, let's, let's go, and we start, and we do it. So I just wanted to share with you that it's possible to grow this way, and uh, everybody can do this. It just takes time. So for us, it's like about six, seven years now, but uh, it's, it's possible. I let the, the... Uh, hello, can you hear me? Um, I'm Sunro from uh, Transition Japan. Uh, it's uh, one o'clock at midnight here. Um, hello. Uh, I was uh, enjo uh, enjoying your uh, talk about success and challenges. And uh, I think a lot of stories are same in Japan. We have been doing I've been doing um, transition from 2008 and there's about 60 to 70 uh, initiatives in Japan and um, I guess challenges and successes um, on both sides. So uh, after th 311, the Fukushima disaster, we have still been growing. So I think that's success and that's also challenges, but um, it's so amazing. It's a we're doing it on a volunteer base, and uh, for maybe nine years we've been doing, it and we're still growing. So that I think that's uh, amazing success that, that I feel in Japan, and now we're uh, connected to the world, and I think um, it's very very promising. Thank you. Thank you all so much. That was so fun. <laughs> you can hear us now if you want to like, give them a little round. Yeah. <laughs> One thing. Um, so one thing that you couldn't hear, all of you wonderful people from all over the world, were the laughs and the applause and all of the comments that came from us but it was heartily received. And now we wanted to go into some question and answer. 
So, um, and remarks. You and remarks. And we have 20 minutes left. And Michael is roaming with the cell phone that Nils is fixing. <laughs> And he'll be taking that so that they can see you. But what I will ask you, as someone asking a question, ask it loud enough for the room to hear, because you'll have a mic close. So Michael, there's one here. And then two, two. Try that. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. The yeah. world can good. Sorry. Okay. Um, hello again. My name is Christina Hill. I'm actually from Shanghai, China. Um, my son and I are here for the summer in Minnesota, and uh, we heard about the conference. Actually, ran into the coordinator, <laughs> Caroline, outside of McAllister here. Um, I'm a director of elementary and I need to understand because it wasn't really covered very much in each of your successes or challenges of how education or educators, uh, especially at the elementary level, we need to get kids in early. So I need to have some understandings of what are the opportunities of entry and or options and roles as educators so that I can also train my teachers and get my school administration involved. So, um, Nanad, I'm going to ask you to speak in just a moment after we mute, so we don't have feedback. So I just wanted to share that. Uh, I just wanted to share that this uh, um, local initiative uh, I was uh, talking about has very, very good relationships uh, with uh, a school, elementary school that's in neighborhood. Uh, they have agreed with them to create a community garden uh, on the school's property. And uh, they also organize uh, different types of programs uh, for kids uh, during uh, summer vacation. And uh, it all works because of good relationships they have with uh, staff and uh, principal. So basically all boils down to relationships, nothing very formal, but very, very good cooperation. Just very briefly to, to comment that in the, in the area that I, that I live, there's a network of garden schools. So there's about 30 schools that all of them, they have gardens, primary schools, and they are connected. And once a year we meet, and we as a local transition initiative, uh, we train in at least three of them. Uh, we train students uh between eight and 14 years old to to do permaculture gardening in their own schools and uh yeah so just to give you an, an example i mean just briefly it's like if we need to transition the society we're living in right now we need to work in every point at every different scale so we can do everything so in a way every local initiative needs to find uh, which is the motivation, the capacities, and so on. So maybe not all initiatives, they work with education, but I think the raising awareness and education is a very transversal thing with all the projects. So always they have something about it.
Well, um, in Zantoso, we also formed um, a working group exactly on that topic, where we are trying to start mapping what is uh, actually there, what um, capacity uh, is already there, uh, what kind of schools is already doing transition and we can work with. And we actually have an excellent one in Copenhagen that I'm trying to get my soon to be 10 year old daughter to. Um, and um, um, it's going to be, you know, mapping from all over the world so we can learn and we can start figuring out how we can do this better. So um, it, it's a, I, I know it's something that is seen as very important from this uh, group's uh, um, point of view. Oh, you should be good. I'm Betsy from Minneapolis, right here in town. No, they no, don't they hear you. Is that Mike on? Mike's on. No, no, that no. The mute symbol has a slash across it. Yeah, but that's on my phone. Yeah, you have to unmute. So we should phone. use your phone. That mic's not working. They can't hear you with yeah, that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank so you for fun. bearing with. <laughs> it's part of the Thank art of virtual hosting. We have to learn, <laughs> yeah, patience if we want to be including people. All right. Is this gonna work? Ooh. Just ask if they can hear. Ask if they can hear, Michael. Can you hear? Can you hear me speaking? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Betsy from right around here. Uh, and I, and wonder, I wonder just, you've all done a wonderful job of starting and just building, a, it sounds like great communities. But when you look back, do you, would you do anything differently? Like, would you start with engaging young people in school sooner in the process or what might you do differently? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone want to try and answer that question? Nina, hang on one sec. Yeah, in a hindsight, I would say no. I would say I would not try to do anything differently uh, because uh, what we do is uh, always making a next experiment and see what's happening. So we were, we were doing uh, this uh, from the beginning. Uh, and that's how we explain uh, people on a, on a, in the neighborhoods and the street levels um, to take this approach to what they do without uh, some very, very big uh, specific plans. But of course, with the, with the vision that, that functions as a, as a, as a um, North Star. Tanya, go ahead. Um, in Denmark, we have a tradition of making lots of these kind of um, associations. It's actually been a tradition a tradition for like 200 years. Um, so it's it's um, it's very easy. It, it's in the DNA of a Dane. Like if you have two Danes in a in, in, on a spot, you will have maybe like seven or 15 different kinds of association. Uh, represented and that's just something that we do and that is why so many things are happening here that looks like transition projects but they don't see themselves they don't um, they don't know <laughs> or they may, may um, late themselves 
and seeing that uh, there would be city gardens or you know uh, urban gardens or whatever um and that, that is great it's okay it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be called transition movement uh, in initi initiatives but that also means that we, we we yeah i mean we could we could you know um maybe be more visual or be more seen in order to, for people to relate more um uh, so you know so then do more marketing on it um but then again it's transition and it's it's not the transition way uh, shit happens and um i think that is the beauty of it it's trial and error all the way through and it's uh, the permaculture principles as well so you go with the flow with the energy and see what happens and if it doesn't work you change something um and um of course we try like now to share our experiences but it's um it's very different culturally uh, and geographically for everybody anyways so something that applies to you may not apply to us and vice versa so um it's just doing stuff great um and i also want to actually i'll show i'll actually show the chat to our video audience um so one other thing about Zoom is this great is you can kind of have this chat going in the background. So after the education question um, from over here, uh, we move to the next round. Isabella sent in the chat. Here in Brazil, we are having a revolution on education. Proyecto Ancora is an amazing example. She gave a, a link, proyectoancora.org.br. Uh, they have videos in English. Uh, also, we have a remark from Shunro. Uh, in Japan, some of initiatives have been doing transition classes once a year, talking about what we're doing. I've been asked to talk about transition in my local elementary school uh, for the whole group with teachers and the principal. Um, you can see Franz is writing as well. So now we've got a whole conversation. Going. Our latest project is still in planning phase is to start a virtual transition teaching from community to community around uh, 17 SD goals, the sustainable development goals. Great. So, uh, and I just also want to make a quick note. This uh, is being recorded and we're going to make this available on uh, the transitionus.org website probably in a couple of weeks after the gathering. Uh, we have time for one more question and then we'll have some closing remarks. Do we need to? Um. The question I'd like to ask, it, my name is Jewel Bistrova and I'm from Northern California, is what, if you could name one thing that has come up for whoever wants to speak up that might, that is the greatest challenge in uh, sustaining a group and, and, and growing your, your ac projects and activities and how you have met that challenge. Um, Okay, so the last question is, uh, yeah, the last question is, uh, what's been your biggest challenge in sustaining a group and keeping it going and how have you, how have you faced that challenge? Anyone want to weigh in on that final round here? Isabella. Isabella. Well, groups are challenging. Um, <laughs> It's the biggest challenge. I think we came to the world only really to connect and to work together. Um, I think it's really care. It's really, really care deep enough to embrace diversity, to deal with different people, different visions. It's really putting a lot of effort and work in looking to this person that really annoys, annoys you in the group and what this person can teach me. How can I learn? How can I go over these annoying things inside of me and, and really look to what is the most important thing that is to stand together and, and continues to work together. So, uh, I think the mo most difficult thing in the world is for you to accept a different vision and have a really open heart. Thank you. My contribution. So, um, 
there is this uh, quite uh, known uh, permaculture buzz sentence uh, uh, originated by late uh, Bill Mollison that problem is solution. Permis uh, worldwide keep repeating that. And uh, what is uh, less known as, is that uh, Bill Mollison said that in the context of uh, people are problem on this planet and people are solution. And uh, uh, what you can see very quickly in every uh, re, uh, transition group that there is somehow this emphasis on uh, relationships, uh, building relationships, and at the same time that's the biggest problem, that's the biggest challenge. And uh, we, uh, in a way, are intentional about building relationships, both in face-to-face -face groups on the neighborhood level and also in uh, remote groups like, like this. And uh, I guess uh, what uh, Isabella just said, uh, using this example of a difficult person is, well, uh, when, when things are hard, uh, the point is uh, to stay and to work it out instead of leave. Uh, in our consumerist culture, we are quite used that when there is a problem, we ask for cash back and go away. That doesn't work like that between people. Now we're to closing, a closing round. And just wanted to ask you again, in the same order, just any final thoughts for us? We have a few more minutes. Just any final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with or that you'd like us to think about or consider? And just very brief, and we'll do, I think, the same order, if that's all right. Tanya, Juan, Isabella, Nina. And then we'll do uh, very briefly with Franz and Shunro and John Paul. So I'm going to mute first. <laughs> and then I'll um, list the order in the chat as well. So here we go. One second. You muted. Sorry, now? Um, well, one of the, the best things that I, I can, can say to everybody, if you are engaged, or if you are thinking about being engaged in transition, is that it's awesome. It's one big family, and um, it, it has to be fun to be sustainable. And even at times when it's not fun, when the burnout is there, and when it, then it's a big family, and it's a big community, and it's, that is giving so much and it, um, it it's uh, it's something that is very selfishly for me um, one of the, the the big reasons why I I, um, I have I can keep energy enough up to do it um, it's because you're also darn lovely and and nice to be with so um, thank you for for attending thank you for inviting and thank thank you for listening and doing what you're doing wherever you're doing um, you're amazing, all of you. Hey, so, um, uh, well, I'm grateful to, to have had the opportunity to spend these minutes with all of you to, to see that, um, in so many different spots of the world, there's people trying to do things to change the places where they live because, um, because we need it, because we don't have so much time, you know, and, and the situation is quite complex and challenging. Um, we need to find a way to, 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 to do a bigger impact and we need to find a way to involve more and more people. And, uh, and in this culture of uh, separation that we live with, we, we are not used to work together. Uh, we are not used to, to, to include different points of view. Uh, we are not used to do many different things. That's why we make mistakes. So we don't need to be afraid of mistakes either. If we learn from them. Uh, I know this is something like very wide, but, uh, 
the way you frame, for example, this workshop, it was success, challenges, and both are part of the same equation. We need both. Without challenges and mistakes, we can learn and have su successes. So, um, so I would say that is, on the one hand, we need to maintain this momentum. We need to feel that we are part of a family as we are. Uh, and at the same time, we need to, to be realistic and, uh, and to take, uh, as in, Sp in Spain, we will say, coger el toro por los cuernos. It would mean like, take the bull from the horns, you know? Because <laughs> this is quite <laughs> difficult, <laughs> my friends. But still, we are here. Let's make this happen. And uh, thank you so much for, for I know it, it, it's a very challenging experience in a big country like the US to make a conference like this one. Thank you so much for, be, for doing it possible and see you soon. Uh, I mean, there is no other option. We need to do it. Either we, either we do it or it's gonna happen. Okay? <laughs> okay. Bye. And there is nothing more fun and nice to do. So I would like to invite you all to see this movie. It, it's in English also. It calls Who Cares? It's from a Brazilian uh, woman. It's an amazing. And this, this is really important. Who Cares? And uh, I'm mentioning this amazing book from Charles Eisenstein. I have to read the, the name because it's big. The more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. It's near us, it depends on us. And so let's do it with a lot of joy and, uh, and passion because I think it's our, oh, the, the only job we have to do is to really to recreate the world in a, in a more generous way base so thank you all it was amazing caroline knows that i love to do this kind of stuff <laughs> and uh, maybe may we all be together again in the next gathering sending a lot of love from the sound from for all of you yeah so um Yes, uh, I, I would say we don't have more important uh, work to do with our lives. And uh, more, and more and more people understand that, and that's very good. And uh, I would go back to my starting point. Um, uh, America, United States, a very, very big country, a very big economy, um, a big culture. And uh, if a transition takes off uh, there and makes a difference, uh, it will be an enormous contribution uh, to humanity and the planet. So I'm just uh, inviting you again to keep doing transition. And thank you to organizer for using this beaming technology to connect us uh, throughout the world. Can you hear me already? Yes, I, I, I want to second Nenat. I, I received uh, in the 90s, I received a lot of positive energy when I traveled and saw how people in the United States are doing local changes from uh, the intentional communities to Arcosanti to all corners. They were having this optimistic spirit and uh, they were considering their work of change as a work of art. And I think uh, we brought that spirit to Europe and uh, maybe now we can also resonate it back a little bit to the source. Thank you. Oh, it's me. Uh, this is Cerno. Thank you for inviting me for um to attend this meeting and I'm happy to see you all. And since um, I think transition is a big, big uh, strength is uh, our um, 
connectiveness uh, across across the world, uh, across the country. So I think uh, no other uh, group has this strength. So it in- inspires a lot of people. And in- that's, I think, why we're still doing this with uh, en- a lot of energy because um, we cooperate with each other. We um, share experiences. And I think that's helping us a lot. So thank you. Hello, thank you everybody. So I just wanted to give you, uh, all of you, many cases from France and uh, from uh, South East Paris. And uh, I think what is important also is to do meditation and to uh, push people to do inner transition. So we don't talk so much about that, but I think it's important. So I want just just to do the stress and just say uh, hello and bye-bye to everybody. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now uh, y'all can hear me, right? Um, I wanna give our uh, participants here a quick moment to just shout out or clap or make noise and appreciation, yeah, for all of you. Yeah, big thanks to all of you. Lots and lots of love and deep gratitude and hope to see you very soon. And one and one last thing. Now I want to. Uh, we're going to mute ourselves and we're going to unmute all of our virtual participants, so y'all can have the last word. Um, so let's see. So if you guys actually want to uh, unmute yourselves, just give a big shout out. No, that. That's good. You can you unmute everybody? Bye. Bye. Bye, people. Un abrazo muy grande. Bonne soirée. Bye. Au revoir. Have fun. Bye bye. All right. Thank you again. Good job. Hi to everyone.